Welcome to Throwback Thursday, a trip down memory lane showcasing the golden era of RC cars. Hey YouTubers, Big Philly with Poor Boys RC. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Throwback Thursday. Uh, today on the Throwback Thursday table, we've got, as per request, we are representing a little bit from the old school Kyosho stable. And uh, this is the Kyosho uh, Turbo Scorpion. Uh, this is a re-release. Once again, guys, I apologize for not having all the original kits from back in the day. Poor boys RC. I was poor. I couldn't afford them. So I buy them now. Okay, so this is what we've got. It's really close to the original article back from the 80s uh, with some minor changes. And we'll go over those changes in a little bit. But today we are looking at the Kyosho Turbo Scorpion. So how is that for an absolutely stunning looking buggy? This thing is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I don't run it too often because uh, I try and keep it for special occasions. If you look closely, you're going to see some sand on here. There's one special beach I like to run this buggy on up in Tofino. If you've ever been to Tofino, Canada, hit up Long Beach. You might see me out there ripping a Turbo Scorpion. But anyway, um, what a beautiful buggy this is. Originally released in 1983, Kyosho came out with the Turbo Scorpion, and this is the 2017 re-release. Now the changes aren't really that drastic in terms of what they what they did to kind of bring it up to snuff for the 2017 marketplace, uh, but a few changes were made. They went to slightly larger wheels. We're up to a 2.2 inch wheel here, whereas in the past it was a bit smaller, perhaps a 1.9. Don't quote me on that. Maybe someone, if you know exactly, throw it down in the comments. The dampers are a bit longer, up to a 12 millimeter oil-filled damper, which is a really beautiful, nice, high-quality, silky smooth front and rear damper. And the biggest upgrade, at least in my opinion, especially if you look at what I've got back there for a power plant, is the gearbox. And although you can't see much there, they've done... Uh, a great job with the gearbox and it's now a two-piece cast metal gearbox so what that means for 2017 is that you can put a castle brushless system like i have in here in this case this is a 6900 kv motor and you can imagine this thing absolutely flies it is an absolute missile and uh, i love getting this thing out on those long open beaches and with the hard packed sand and just flying. It is an absolute blast to watch this guy tear up the sand. So, uh, so Kyosho's come to the table, got this thing up to snuff for two seven, 2017, and here it is. But let's take a closer look at it and kind of see what, uh, what some of the old sort of vintage looks are and some of the vintage stuff that's going on here because this is a really special buggy. Let's check it out. So check out this front suspension, guys. We've got this awesome rake to the front end. The shocks are leaning back on a super aggressive angle. And we've got this trailing axle sort of set up. We've got a long, thick bar up front and the shocks pivot on that bar. And, uh, and the whole front axle sort of moves. It kind of it rolls back as the suspension compresses and kind of toes, kind of cambers in a little bit at the top, but but hey, I mean, this is a design from the early 80s. And uh, if you think about it for, for the technology of the day, this is amazing. And it's really neat to watch the suspension work and see these old school pieces, this, this sort of pot metal that they used back in the 80s, back in the day. And uh, really, really neat to watch that work. The rear suspension is a bit of a different beast. You've got this rear sort of trailing axle and the axle is hinged at the end of the chassis. We've got the same 12 millimeter shock out here in the back and kind of neat to watch how that suspension works as well. Very different than the uh, sort of the, the modern buggies of today. And of course, as the suspension's flexing, you can really see how the rear wheels camber in and so do the fronts. <laughs> but hey, born in 83, baby. That was the technology back in the day. Now check out the bottom of the chassis, everyone. This is really neat how they've done this. We've got a dual aluminum ladder frame 
a lot like a modern day crawler, like a like my first SCX10. I remember seeing a ladder frame chassis and thinking, wow, that is such a neat idea. And here we've got a very similar idea with this uh, aluminum ladder frame chassis. We've got some aluminum bracing in the rear, uh, which is also helping to mount the gearbox and stabilize the rear end. This plastic tray you see right here is the battery tray and we can easily lift this up, slides right out. And there's my receiver there, which I have Plasti dipped. And we have a nice big square battery tray here, which believe it or not, I can take my 5,000 milliamp Gen Zace LiPo with the body off and everything else. I would feed the cables through here but I can actually get this battery to sit inside this case, inside this holder. So that is a really remarkable thing they've done. This will now accept a modern 2S LiPo. If you have a smaller, a bit of a smaller LiPo like the Tamiya style or the old school NICAD style LiPos, they're gonna drop right in. You could have no problem fitting a modern pack in there. Check out the tires, guys. Sand Super. I love it. I love the I love the writing on the side. I love that it says Sand Super. Um, nice soft rubber compound. We've got a nice rib tire in the front. Uh, much wider mini sort of square block tire on the rear. Now check out this body. We'll take the body off. I've already got the body pin taken out of the front. And if you look closely, we've got this roll cage and as it comes down right here it clips onto the rear portion of the cage and then we've got two more clips right underneath here that we pop up and that's how you remove the body really neat body attachment system and there is our chassis so that's about as basic of a chassis as you could ever <laughs> imagine a couple metal ladder frames uh, ladder frame rails, bathtub style chassis with integrated battery holder, and just this little bathtub tray. I've got my steering servo right here with a long arm that goes to the front steering linkage, which does have an integrated servo saver, which is nice. And as you can see, I can fit a modern uh, ESC in here. In this case, I'm running the Castle Sidewinder 3, which uh, again is paired up to a 6900 kV castle brushless motor and this thing is an absolute rocket ship with this setup it's really awesome and now the gearbox cover it's just held on with one body clip which i just removed off camera and this cover just slides right off allowing you easy access you've got nice metal gears inside here you've got a in this case i'm running a taller the taller pinion set it does come with two sets of gears right out of the box so you could run a, a smaller pinion and larger spur or bigger pinion, smaller spur for more speed. I've got this sucker wound up as fast as it'll go and a nice slipper clutch uh, included as well with dog bones in the rear axles. So that's it for today's episode of Throwback Thursday, guys. Thanks again for tuning in and thank you again for taking a trip down memory lane with me all the way back to 1983 when I was five years old and this vehicle would have been way out of my price range <laughs> and I, I would never in a million years be able to get my hands on one. And uh, here we are today able to talk about it and share with all you guys at home. So I really hope you guys appreciate the content. Please do leave a like and a comment, subscribe, share if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. 2021 is a year. I want to get this channel really rocking and rolling. So all the love you guys can share and send my way, I'd really appreciate. And uh, thanks again for watching. And of course, be excellent to each other.